So Marcus, thank you for that inspiring talk. <laughs> Our next speaker is going to be Florian Lobert, uh, who is going to talk about Jungian symmetry, fishnet integrals, and geometry. Yeah, OK. Um, yeah, first of all, thanks a lot to the organizers for the invitation to talk here. Um, so this is actually about a uh, research direction that um, we've been pursuing for a number of years now. Um, so it touches several papers of the last years with these um, collaborators here. And in the second part, I will tell you about the most recent developments together with um, this group of people here from Bonn. So I guess um, we are all here because we and work on integrability because we share this opinion of, of Hermann Weil, who um, says that whenever he had to choose between the true and the beautiful, he chose the beautiful. And integrable structures are certainly a, a very beautiful subject. Um, and I think from the particle physics perspective, the ADSCFT correspondence has clearly helped to reduce the gap between truth and beauty because it brought integrability to four-dimensional quantum field theory. Um, still, n equals four super mills theory is probably more beautiful than true. So it would be nice to, to close this gap uh, a bit further and to, to see whether integrability can help um, more in the direction of um, particle phenomenology. And where could integrability actually help? Um, there's, there's one big bottleneck um, in, the, in the computation of scattering amplitudes, um, cross sections at particle collider, colliders, and that's still the computation of um, perturbative Feynman integrals at higher loop orders. If you are at low loops or, or legs, this situation is under quite good control by now due to the work of a, a number of people. Um, and there you have integrals arising that have this structure with a, a rational integrand that you can iteratively define to find these multiple polylogarithms whose, whose um, mathematics is quite well understood by now. But if you go to higher loops, um, new function classes appear. You have integrals where you have um, higher order polynomials, um, uh, roots of higher order polynomials. So you can't reduce them to these multiple polylogarithms anymore. And this is a very active area of re research. Currently, people are trying to understand the function classes, the building blocks needed to compute these Feynman integrals and thereby scattering amplitudes and and cross sections. There are really dedicated workshops and conferences by this um, small industry that works on the computation of Feynman integrals. So this talk is about the connection between integrability and Feynman integrals. In the first part, I will just briefly tell you that by integrability, I actually mean Youngian symmetry. Here, I will then tell you how um, Massless Feynman integrals inherit such a Youngian symmetry from the planar ADS-CFT correspondence. I will briefly sketch how this generalizes also to massive Feynman integrals, which a priori is somewhat surprising, um, because in the context of, the, of, of a massive phase of ADS-CFT of, of n equals four super mills theory, we don't know of any integrable structures so far. And finally, I will come to an application to fishnet integrals, which leads to a um, nice connection to geometry. So as I said, for the sake of this talk, by integrability, I actually mean Youngian symmetry. And just one slide on, on the Youngian here. So it's an extension of a Lie algebra. And the most important thing for this talk is that it's generated by these two sets of generators here. So at level zero, you have an, the ordinary Lie algebra generators with a trivial tensor product action that are constructed from some densities. And in this talk, this tensor product will actually be given by the external legs of your Feynman integral. And then you have a set of so-called level one generators that are constructed from the same densities here. But you take two of them and sum them over all uh, relative positions on this tensor product. 
Um, you also have these cell relations, but they won't play a, a role for this talk. So the important thing is that you have these two sets of generators that span the Youngian algebra. And there are all kinds of examples of rational integrable models where the Youngian plays the algebraic, the role of the algebraic underpinning for this um, integrability, the Heisenberg spin chain where the Lie algebra is SU2, or ADSFT where you have PSU2, 2 slash 4, and the Youngian appearing in all different contexts. And typically, before Youngian symmetry was investigated in the context of 2D theories, spin chains, 2D field theories, where the consequence is that um, the scattering matrix in these field theories or spin chains factorizes. So let me now tell you um, about this connection to Feynman integrals. I'm actually interested in this very spe special class of Feynman integrals that has played a, an already an important role in the last years in this community. These fishnet Feynman integrals, which are easy to construct. So you have one integration vertex. These are position space Feynman rules and propagators of this form. So they are given by 1 over xjk square, where xjk is just the difference of these space-time coordinates, and the square just means the um, contraction of Lorentz vectors. So this is an example of these graphs. Every um, dot here corresponds to an, um, every bullet, solid bullet, corresponds to an, a loop integration. So in principle, these are very complicated integrals. And the only integral that's really under full control is this most simple example, namely the cross or box integral. So I will equivalently say cross or box because if you go to dual momentum variables that are related to these axes by this equation here, then the dual graph looks like this and you really have a box here which um, in momentum space is your um, loop of, of integration. So despite being very complicated and mostly unsolved, these graphs have very nice properties. They have conformal symmetry. Um, realized by such differential operators. So here you see this sum over the external legs and the momentum generator is just the derivative. Um, they are finite, and uh, which makes it very convenient to work with them. And um, as I will tell you now, they are related to ADCFT integrability. So also just one slide on this, which has been discussed um, a lot and we will hear more about this, I think, in the following talks about this um, connection to the fishnet theory and um, Feynman integrals. So we start with the Lagrangian of planar adequates for super mid theory here in the upper left corner. Then we introduce what's called the gamma deformation that has been investigated by many people here in the community from, from different um, directions. So you take products in the Lagrangian and replace them by non-commutative products, which gives additional factors here that um, depend on the carton charges of the fields. And the important thing is that you introduce three new parameters, gamma 1, 2, 3 here, which gives you then a uh, Lagrangian that depends on the coupling constant and these three additional parameters. And then um, Volodya and Ömer realized um, that you can take these special double scaling limits. In particular, in the simplest case, you can take a limit where the coupling constant goes to zero, and you take one of these parameters to imaginary infinity, while keeping this product here, coupling times this exponential factor fixed, and this xi, this product, then gives you your new, new coupling constant. And in this very restrictive limit, most of the fields of n equals 4 super mid theory decouple, and you end up with this very simple bi-scalar Lagrangian. You have two scalar complex matrix valued fields, that are coupled by this single four-point interaction vertex. Yeah? So to complete this theory, there are subtleties. You have to add double trace terms. Um, but for the, for the um, sake of the, what I'm looking at, this won't play a role here for these correlators I'm interested in. So because there's only this particular chiral four-point vertex, this theory is non-unitary, which from a physicist's perspective is a priori uh, a downside. 
On the other hand, this is a very nice um, advantage that if you write down a correlation function like here, so you take a sequence of fields, x, 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 z, x bar, z, and so on, and want to compute the cor correlator, then there's only a single Feynman integral that you can write down. Because now this four-point vertex here should actually have arrows on the lines, and that means you can only draw a single graph. So in this theory, these correlators are in one-to-one -one correspondence with individual Feynman integrals. And that's nice because correlators in n equals four typically have nice properties with regard to integrability. So one can expect that also these correlators in the fishnet theory alias Feynman integrals inherit some of these nice structures. And in fact, one can show that they are annihilated by these Youngian generators, in particular by these Youngian level one generators, which when they act on the kinematics of this Feynman diagram, um, a yield zero. So um, we see that via this mechanism um, we get integrable structures for Feynman integrals. So this is very abstract. Let me tell you more explicitly what this means. Um, <clears throat> I told you about these two levels of the Youngian. The level zero is just the conformal algebra by, uh, that you get by the, whose action you get by summing over densities, and the densities are just these differential representations of dilatation, Lorentz, momentum, and special conformal generator. And it's well known that conformal symmetry implies that uh, then a Feynman integral, an endpoint Feynman integral, is given by some, some prefactor that carries the conformal weight times the conformal function phi that only depends on these cross conformal cross ratios. So this is already a big um, simplification as compared to um, the general Feynman integral. Then you have these additional level one symmetries. I already gave you the recipe how to construct them. So you take the same densities as written up here. For example, the level one momentum generator looks like this. You have the Lorentz density, dilatation, and momentum density, and you sum over these um, ordered positions. And this means that this is, um, again, a differential operator, but now a second-order differential operator that acts non-locally on the external legs of the Feynman graph. So now, Youngian invariance means this equation here, the level one momentum, annihilates the integral. And for these fishnet graphs, we can write this in this particular form. We pull out some space-time vector, and here we get a differential operator that I denote by PDE. Um, which is the differential operator only in these conformal cross ratios. And one can argue <coughs> under certain condi conditions that these vectors here are actually independent so that we can read off a set of differential equations from this Youngian invariance condition. And this is the, the main message here. Youngian symmetry translates into systems of coupled differential equations in the conformal variables. So here, our favorite example, the, the, the simplest integral, the box integral, um, again, here are these uh, two equivalent representations in X or P space. Um, the conformal symmetry implies that the integral can be written with this overall weight-carrying factor and a function that depends only on the conformal variables Z and Z bar, which are defined through these standard conformal cross ratios here. Then the Youngian symmetry implies that there are two differential equations that this function has to obey. So here, J can take values one and two, and these are the explicit differential operators. These are second order differential equations, and you can solve them by elementary methods to find four solutions. So the solution space is spent by these four functions here. And now you can use in addition that this integral is actually invariant under any permutations of the external points. So if you exchange two of the external points, the integral will be the same, so permutations are symmetries of the integral. And these permutation symmetries single out this last function as the only possible solution compatible with Youngian symmetry and permutation symmetry. So this is actually the well-known bloch wigner dialogarithm, which has been known to um, correspond to this integral for um, some time already, but here we've shown that we can actually fix it just using the, the symmetries, this Youngian symmetry. 
So you may wonder why there are, there are actually four solutions, whether Yang and symmetry does not pin down the whole thing completely. And in fact, one needs these other three solutions um, to express the integral in Minkowski space. And um, as we've shown with um, Matthias and Luke and uh, Julian, so um, the Youngin actually spits out all the building blocks that you need to completely write down this integral. So this, in Minkowski space, you will have to take different linear combinations of these functions depending on different kinematic regions. Um, and uh, these are all the Youngin invariant building blocks that you need to express the integral. So, so far, we only discussed massless Feynman integrals, and in particular with regard to maybe possible phenomenological applications, of course, masses are also very interesting to consider. So let's think about generalizing this to the massive case. <coughs> and um, you remember that in the massless situation, the logic was that we start with planar n equals four, we take this fishnet limit, where correlators are individual Feynman integrals, and then we argue that these Feynman integrals should actually inherit integrability properties. Of course, people have looked at um, massive phases of n equals four by um, giving a VEF to one of the scalar fields, so introducing mass via the Higgs mechanism, which leads to propagators of this form here. So before we had these massless difference propagators, and now we have masses also appearing as differences here. And there's also a well known generalization of um, conformal symmetry to this massive situation, um, which takes this form here. So now we also have derivatives acting on the masses, which actually take the role of an extra dimension of a fifth or d plus one dimension of your spacetime vectors. But unfortunately, there's no integrability, no young end symmetry known in this massive phase of n equals four super mills theory, so we cannot just follow the same logic here, start with an integrable massive n equals four and deduce such, a, um, such implications for Feynman integrals. So what we did instead was to look at massive Feynman integrals directly, um, just to look at, at examples. So this is a, um, a two-loop example where now the solid lines denote massive propagators and this dashed line here is a, is a massless propagator corresponding to the hatted and unhatted um, axis here. We've seen there is this well-known massive generalization of conformal symmetry, which gives, gives us the level zero generators, and we have a recipe how to construct from them level one generators. So we can simply write down a candidate for a level one generator. And when one acts on these Feynman integrals, the situation is actually almost better than expected. So at one loop, um, actually all graphs have the Youngian symmetry. Here I even introduced generic propagator powers. And as long as these sum up at this vertex to the space-time dimension, so we can make the thing even um, d-dimensional, we have this Youngian symmetry for any one-loop graph, no matter whether the um, propagators are massless or massive. At two loops, the situation is also quite nice. So we have a large family of graphs. The only restriction is that this internal propagator here um, has to remain massless to have this massive generalization of young end symmetry. So this one can really prove analytically by acting on the Feynman integrals. Um, at higher loops, we have only numerical indications so far, but our conjecture is that actually you can take any graph cut from a reg regular tiling of the plane, so from a square, hexagonal, or triangular lattice, and as long as the propagators in the bulk, like here, remain massless, you still have this Youngian symmetry. So all the propagators on the boundary can be massive um, to, to have this symmetry. So since there was this nice connection between massless Feynman integrals and this massless fishnet theory, we also thought a bit about generalizing this. And with some more technical input, one can also take a, a certain limit theory of um, n equals four on the Coulomb branch, um, which leads to such a simple generalization of the fishnet theory, which is given here in the first line. So we just have um, these massive 
terms here, and the important thing is that the masses enter in these differences, just as in the Feynman integrals we've seen before. So this is not exactly the same as if you do spontaneous simulatory breaking in the fishnet theory, so it's a, it gives a slightly different theory, which um, uh, is particularly reflected in these coefficients here. And um, the interesting thing about this theory here is that also here one can argue that off-shell scattering amplitudes, which map to these, in the, to these dual graphs, to these X space, um, graphs are exactly in one one-to-one corres one correspondence with these massive Feynman integrals for which we found this Youngian symmetry. So it seems there are integrable structures present in this massive quantum field theory, and I'm, I'm not aware of any other context where um, quantum integrability appears in four-dimensional massive quantum field theory. So I think this is an interesting direction, and it might hint at further integrable structures to be discovered in, uh, on the Coulomb branch of n equals 4 super young mills. So also this massive Youngian symmetry we can study, we can look what are the consequences. So um, let's look at this nice family of one loop graphs because we saw that all of them have the Youngian symmetry. Um, they are particularly interesting because um, a couple of weeks ago this paper appeared here which argued that, in fact, um, uh, contact to Witten diagrams are exactly the same as these integrals. So you can, one can write them in a particular re representation so that one can identify them, which implies that these Witten diagrams have the same Youngian symmetry. So there is also um, at least some, there are some traces of Youngian symmetry in this holographic correlator story. And it's exactly this class of Feynman integrals. So if we evaluate our Youngian constraints, again, this massive generalization of the conformal symmetry implies a dependence on some cross ratios. And here the massive generalization of the cross ratios looks like this. This is uh, really the, the, these are the good variables in this massive case. And again, Youngian symmetry implies partial differential equations for these functions phi here. And we can go through the different cases, to, through the different numbers of external points. For two points, we just have this bubble type integral, and we can solve the Youngian equations directly to find the Gauss hypergeometric function with some overall prefactor here. At three points, one finds um, by the symmetry arguments the so called Srivastava hypergeometric function HC. And then, if one looks at higher points, one can quickly see the pattern and write down uh, a generic formula for such a hypergeometric series <coughs> um, that corresponds to these integrals. And in fact, um, this conjecture was also um, verified by, by these people here who actually in this context developed a higher dimensional melin barnes approach so they can algor algorithmically solve um, the corresponding melin barnes integrals and really uh, confirm that this is the, the right hypergeometric expression. So one thing I haven't told you so far about these integrals is that they have nice geometric interpretations. Yeah, these, these massive one-loop integrals that I've shown you actually relate to um, simplices with, whose angles are given by these kinematic um, combinations. So they compute volumes of these um, polytopes or, or simplices. And in particular, in the master's limit, the most prominent example is this cross or box integral, which we've shown is computed by the Bloch-Wigner um, dialogarithm. And this actually corresponds to the volume of an ideal tetrahedron. This is a, a classic result that's, um, that's well known. But um, I think so far, all the examples where Feynman integrals compute volumes are um, limited to one loop integrals. And a natural question might be whether such a th thing actually generalizes also to higher loop integrals. And <coughs> if we want to get higher loop integrals under control, of course, this is in general a very complicated problem. I told you only this cross integral of this family of, of fishnet integrals is really under good control so far. Um, so a good idea might be to reduce complexity, and um, here we do this by going to one or two dimensions. Yeah. So we look at these fishnet integrals um, 
with propagators that look like this, and where we choose now the propagator powers that they obey the conformal condition in one or two D. So they sum up to the space-time dimension, and that means the propagator should be one quarter or one half. An interesting fact is that these integrals now correspond to correlation functions in this d-dimensional generalization of the fishnet theory, which was introduced by Volodya and Enrico. Um, <coughs> so they also have a, in some sense, physical interpretation, these individual Feynman integrals. The simplest example is now the, again, the box integral, and now we are in 1D, so I think this is really probably the simplest one can get. And this integral one can really compute directly in Mathematica. Yeah? And one finds this combination of two um, complete elliptic K integrals whose definition is written down here. Yeah? So as I said, this is r really simple. You can get it in, in Mathematica, but still, let's look at it from this Youngian perspective. Um, again, um, we can write on the Youngian generators, which in this 1D case is just given, uh, just given by the algebra SL2R. <coughs> and the level zero symmetry just means that um, the integral depends on this function phi of a single cross-ratio variable. Then the Youngian differential equation, it's actually a single differential equation in this case, happens to be the Legendre equation, which looks like this, and this has exactly two solutions, namely this power series, this k of z, and this what I call single log solu solution k of one minus z. And I write this down here in this slightly um, uh, peculiar way, writing it as a power series in the log times a power series, because this is actually the structure that will generalize um, also at higher loops. <coughs> so Youngian symmetry tells us that the integral is given by this um, solution vector k of z, k of one minus z, so we know that we can get it, write it as a constant vector contracted with this solution vector. And you could use some numeric data points to indeed find that this constant prefactor is just given by what we've seen on the previous slide. If you go to two loops, you have three variables here, so a function of three variables. Again, you can use the Youngian um, to generate differential equations. So here's an example. It's a second order differential equation in these three variables. And um, you get some differential equations from this, but one important uh, point is that you get actually less than in higher dimensions because you don't have the, the space-time vectors <coughs> x mu, which, um, of which you could argue in higher dimensions that they are independent, so you get less differential equations from this Youngian symmetry. But there's actually a nice trick one can um, apply here. So I told you already that permutation symmetries of the integral play an important role. We used them already in the context of the box. And now we use these permutation symmetries so I can exchange any of the legs sitting at the same integration vertex, and that's a symmetry of the integral. And I can directly apply them to the Youngian generator. Yeah? So any permutation sigma I can apply to the Youngian generator, which is not invariant under the permutation. So this will give additional differential equations so that I get a, a larger set of differential equations from the Youngian and the Youngian combined with these permutations. And then one can um, apply what's um, called the Frobenius method for Fuchsian type differential equations. And also at two loops, one finds a similar structure here. One finds one power series solution three log times a power series solution and one double log solution. Since we have more variables, the structure becomes slightly more um, complicated, but it's in principle the same pattern. So we have a five-dimensional solution vector, and indeed we can fix a constant prefactor here, prevector, um, to express this conformal function for this integral. This actually generalizes to higher loops, to the so-called family of, of train track integrals, um, which are, whose name comes from this dual green graph here, which looks like a, a train track. And you see exactly here this solution pattern. One um, a power series, one log, one power series, three log, one double log, and so on. And um, the associated geometry in the one-loop case is the elliptic curve. Then you have a K3 surface, and in general, these are 
Calabiao L-fold. So at L loops, you have a Calabiao L-fold um, that describes this integral. And this is interesting because um, there is a work by Matthias and collaborators um, who investigated train tracks in 4D and argued that these co actually corresponded L loops to L minus one fold. So there's a slight um, shift in this parameter. And even in, for, for general fishnets, one can argue that these have this Calabiao structure, so they are related to um, geometry in this, this way. And for the connection to integrability, the most interesting thing is that um, the Yangian plus these permutation symmetries in the sense that I've des described on the previous slide actually generates the so-called Pika-Fuchs ideal of differential operators whose solutions are the periods of these Calabiao um, L-folds. So there is a connection here between geometry and integrability. If we go to two loops, things become even better. Um, so you can uh, split up the Youngian in uh, holomorphic and anti-holomorphic part and actually reuse the Youngian invariants that we found before. This, uh, we use the same solution vector pi um, uh, at the same number of external points in, in two dimensions. <coughs> and the integral takes this double copy form. Yeah? So we have this solution vector of z times some constant matrix times the complex conjugate um, variable z. This can also be multiple um, variables z1 to zn. Um, and indeed, if you look at the simplest example that has uh, first been given by um, Enrico and Volodya in this form, it's given as a um, linear combination of two factorized Youngian invariants. Yeah? And you can bring it exactly into this form, the solution vector times the matrix and times the BART solution vector. A question, a natural question is what the role of this matrix sigma is. And here we can remember that um, these fishnet integrals actually have an interpretation as correlators in this d-dimensional fishnet theory of Volodya and Enrico. And um, in this context of Calabi-Yaus, there's actually a natural um, single-valued function. This correlator should be single-valued. And this is the, the Kähler potential. And in fact, we observe exactly that this integral um, with this structure is given by e to the minus v, where v is the Kähler potential of this Calabiao um, L-fold. And this is nothing but the volume of this um, Calabiao L-fold, so there is a nice relation between um, volumes and higher loop integrals. In particular, in this Calabiao context, it's known how to compute this so-called intersection matrix sigma. So we can now say that we can use the Youngian to compute these vectors pi and this Calabi-Yau framework to compute the, the intersection matrix. And then we have an integrability and geometry based um, way to compute this Feynman integral. Let me finally just give a, a, a comment on this well known, by now well known, uh, Bustle Dixon formula. So um, Benjamin and Lance found that if you look at these fishnets, in a four-point coincident limit, then there's a very nice determinant formula for these, these integrals. And um, Enrico and Volodya generalized this to two dimensions, and this is just very schematic here. There are actually additional factors um, in, the, in the real formula. I just, I just wanted to sketch it. And here you see already a glimpse of this, this double copy um, form. So you have a square of this hypergeometric function PFQ for this, uh, these values of P and Q. And um, you can check explicitly that this gives exactly this structure here where the intersection matrix is somewhat hidden in these epsilon derivatives um, that you set to zero, this, addition, uh, this um, auxiliary parameter that you set to zero in the end. So um, there's also a nice connection to this Basso-Dixon formula. Um, just one more comment on the, the Youngian symmetry. The Youngian does not commute with this coincident limit, coincidence limit. So um, the graphs here on the right are not annihilated by the Youngian level one generators. They rather, the respective differential operators, rather induce such dimension shift relations. Yeah? So we have an alpha times beta um, Basso-Dixon graph in D dimension. 
And this Young and differential operators map it to a d plus two dimensional integral where also some of the propagator powers are shifted. And this is reminiscent of these contiguous relations for hypergeometric functions, for example, 2F1 uh, um, obeys this relation. The differential equation is mapped to such a shift in the parameters. And it uh, would be very interesting to really solve this equation in a similar way, um, which might lead to a, um, a generalization of Basso Dixon to graphs with gener generalized um, propagator powers. So let me conclude. Um, so we've seen that integrability is present in the context of four-dimensional quantum field theory also beyond n equals four super mills theory, namely in the building blocks of quantum field theory in, in Feynman integrals. It even extends beyond the massless case, so you can find this Youngian symmetry for integrals with massive propagators. Um, and it relates to the theory of Calabiao manifolds, and I think this has not been um, seen before that there's actually young end symmetry related to, to this uh, Calabi-Yau theory. From the geometry point of view, um, we see that Feynman integrals um, also at higher loops compute volumes of geometric objects. And I think this is also the first example where they compute volumes um, of different quantities than polytopes. I think these one loop examples were always um, some kind of, of polytopes. Um, and we even have a geometry and integrability based um, way to compute the Feynman integrals via this double copy form here. Um, the Youngian generates this Pika Fuchs idea um, of differential operators with the Calabiao periods being the, the solutions. And the interesting thing is that it se really seems to give all the differential operators, so the complete set of differential operators and the complete set of basis. Um, um, components that you need to express these Feynman integrals. And uh, I think the general lesson is that these one and two D fishnet models are really instructive um, setups for studying the involved function classes that are currently um, under investigation also from the amplitudes of Feynman integral community. Let me just briefly give um, an outlook. There are really many things um, to do many open ends to understand. Um, maybe the most direct would be to look at these 2D integrals and to introduce the masses there to see what meaning the masses have in this geometric setup. Um, to go back to four dimensions and to apply this uh, Youngian approach to four dimensional fishnets now with uh, the new insights on these solution structures. Um, you can also find similar higher symmetries in the context of divergent integrals, so in the context of dimensional regularization, and I think it would be very interesting to further pursue this because this is the kind of integrals that you typically um, find when you have um, a real-world problem, that your integrals are not finite. And uh, another question would be what volumes or what geometries do actually other fishnet structures correspond to, triangular or hexagonal fishnet integrals? Then um, with regard to this question of massive integrability, we've seen this massive fishnet theory for which the, so far the only indication for integrability is the Youngian symmetry. Um, it would be nice to find other um, indications that this theory is actually integrable, and one approach might be that of Tristan, uh, Raoul, and Anne, um, who looked actually at the, in the massless case, at the spectrum of the dilatation operator in n equals four, and depending on the distribution of energies, could can decide whether it's a chaotic or integrable system. And it would be nice to apply this maybe also in this context of the, the mass efficient theory. Um, maybe there's a straightforward massive generalization of this dual fish chain model by um, Amit and Kolya. Then with regards to pure mathematics, I think this relation between the Youngian and this Pika-Fuchs idea um, for the Calabi-Yau periods is, is a new thing. And there's actually a large community of people investigating calabi um, with a physical or purely mathematical motivation. And it would be interesting to clarify what the role of integrability here is in a larger context. Um, probably there are more 
higher loop integrals that compute volumes of geometric objects. It would be nice to further explore this space. And finally, um, we've seen this, this paper on the correlators in, in ADS on this relation to Young and symmetry of Witten diagrams, uh, of contact Witten diagrams. It would be interesting to see whether this is just a coincidence or whether there's more behind this and whether this also generalizes to, to other um, diagrams in this context of holographic correlators. Thank you. Thank you, Florian, for that very nice talk. Uh, do we have questions? So if you just maybe wait until the microphone arrives. Hello. Hi. So you're so far, I feel almost online. Uh, sorry, say again? No, it's not a question. You're so far from here that I feel I'm almost on Zoom now. Uh, I see, uh, okay. Uh, so the question two, actually. First, can you do inhomogeneities as part of the story? For, I mean, so uh, for Youngian, can you do inhomogeneities there? Whether we can deal with inhomogeneities? Um, well, we have them already in the game. That's, um, maybe I have a, um, I haven't, given you all the technical details, but um, we have, the, the Youngian generators actually have such a, a tail here um, with the evaluation parameters. And um, these depend uh, on the inhomogeneities um, of, the, of, of your uh, monodromy matrix. And you have to choose the inhomogeneities depending on the graph. So there's a, a clear pattern. And here, actually, the rules, if you, they translate to these evaluation parameters, if you add some leg of your graph and you go from one to the next leg, depending on whether there's an internal propagator in between, you either um, add this combination or this combination and the A's and B's here are the propagator powers of these propagators here. So they already play a role. So, so they're there but they're fixed, right? They are fixed. You want to gen uh, um, well, no, the, the A's don't have to be fixed. They can still be parameters. We can deal with integrals which have generic propagator powers, yeah. Okay, yeah, I see. And uh, the other question is, so you say that, okay, these diagrams compute uh, volume of Calabi-Yau, right? Yeah. Yeah, so did you think what other cohomologies computed for by? Um, uh, we haven't, uh, wait, this is, this is just a, a new thing we found, so we haven't looked further at the moment. I think it's not clear how, which, which classes of ge geometries can appear in, in the context of these Feynman integrals, whether it's only Calabi-Yau's or whether there are worse things appearing? Um. Uh, no, no question about Calabi-Yau, the manifold volume, it's, it's high cohomolo cohomology uh, class, but there are also other cohomologies in this manifold, like uh, lower rank cohomologies. And you want to do what with them? Uh, maybe there is an object that computes them. That's, it's, it's, it's possible, but yeah, I, at the moment, I don't know. Okay. Okay, more questions? Yeah, I think Shaka has a question. Yeah, I guess it's related to the second question of Dima, but uh, is there any new things? Is there any new thing that you can kind of like learn or compute about Calabi-Yau using this connection with integrability in Youngian? I, I think the statement that this Pika-Fuchs ideal is computed by the Youngian is a new statement. So, I mean, my collaborators, in particular Albrecht Klemmi, is really an, an expert uh, on Calabi-Yau, and I think this is something that um, is, is not known so far. So it's, yeah, it, it, it's really a, a helpful tool here to generate um, these differential equations. Okay, more questions, yeah. Hi, uh, very nice talk, and I wanted to ask about higher points. Uh, we know that uh, the elliptic functions that you presented in the beginning can appear also in 4D if we consider uh, higher point integrals, namely five point uh, in general kinematics or just six points even on the plane. 
Uh, therefore, can you make some statements about uh, that using a young yang symmetry? Because these are very complicated objects to compute, even uh, if we restrict uh, to planar fish nets. Right? So, did yes. you explore? Uh, I, I think the same function classes that you have here in 1 and 2D will appear in, in 4D as well. So, um, Matthias and collaborators have looked at these train track integrals in 4D. We can look at the integrand in the Feynman parameterization and argue that this should correspond to Calabria or L or L minus 1 folds. So, the, the same geometries apply. And um, we can write down these young and differential equations also for higher point um, Feynman integrals. We've done this for the 6.2 loop um, integral. So, I should also have this somewhere here. So, this is, these are the differential equations for the double box integral in four dimensions. Yeah? And you can solve them. Uh, in terms of hypergeometric functions, um, ninefold hypergeometric functions, and these people with their Mellon Barnes <coughs> approach actually fixed the linear combinations. So you have formal expressions <coughs> um, in terms of Youngian invariant hypergeometric functions. Um, and I think now we have gotten really better understanding of the solution structure from this 1 and 2D theories. I think we could now go back to this and look again at these differential equations and maybe better understand um, how these solutions are related to the geometry. Yes. Okay, and uh, related to this, since uh, in 4D uh, there is this appearance in uh, Basso Dixon diagrams uh, of uh, the terminal structure, uh, could you somehow infer this directly from uh, young yang symmetry and in particular could you, uh, following those lines, uh, uh, guess or, yes, uh, get some hint towards uh, uh, more involved but s still nice structure for higher point integrals, which is very much needed because for higher point correlators. Yeah, that, that's, that's actually something um, we are currently also trying to better understand in um, 1 and 2D first. I think these are really instructive models. It's, of course, simpler to work in lower dimensions, but the structure is still very similar. Um, and at the moment, I can tell you that there are certain determinant relations coming from this Calabi-Yau business. Um, we are still trying to systematize this and, uh, and see how it relates to, to Basso-Dixon. Because, as you know, the, the Basso-Dixon formula in 4D and your 2D version, they are also somehow qualitatively a bit different, right? <coughs> um, it's uh, different integrals uh, appearing in the, in the matrix. So, yeah, one has to understand the general framework. Okay, I think there was a quick question from Collier, and then I think we will. <coughs> how, how did you know it was quick? Uh, uh <laughs> In that case, I'm uh, so, so na a bit naive question. So I, I understand correctly, the integrals are annihilated by all elements of monodromy matrix, essentially, right? That's the statement. So can you um, then? They are eigenstates of the monodromy. Yeah. Say again. They are eigenstates of the monodromy matrix. Yeah, so uh, then there are also eigenstates of transfer matrix, but with whatever twist you like, right? So you can put any uh, twist. So can you, well, for each of those, uh, there is, uh, I suspect it would be also highest weight probably spin chain, if, uh, this transfer matrix, right? Is it? Then can you use some, uh, I don't know, algebraic bit and that's to build uh, eigenvectors and restrict to zero eigenvalue sector somehow and find uh, vectors which don't depend on twist? So just more standard you, you, you should tell me <laughs> I, don't, I don't know of course it would be nice to to further look at what uh, how you can use integrability efficiently to compute these things um, I think one difference to say two-dimensional setups where you have Youngian symmetry say you have an, a scattering matrix that factorizes into two to two scattering matrices typically you really just have to take a matrix product of of two uh, two to two scat uh, scattering matrices here the product between the, the scattering matrices is actually the integral, right? So you glue them with an integration vertex. So the, yeah, maybe the most complicated problem is to do the, to, to evaluate the product of these, these matrices. So I think this is a qualitative difference. Yeah, in, in 2D you would say, if you have, know that the uh, scattering matrix factorizes, you just have to multiply matrices. 
But here you have to do the still would still have to do the integrations just on a on a um, abstract level. Or maybe we can discuss discuss afterwards. Yeah. Uh, okay. So I think uh, with that, uh, let's uh, thank Florian again. And we are going to have a slightly shortened coffee uh, break of 20 minutes.